Good morning. Today we celebrate the feast of St. Lawrence, deacon and martyr of the church. So we begin in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace and love of God our Father and of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all of you. My sisters and brothers, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, the Lord invites us into his mercy and love. Lord, you are sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You come to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. And you are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And it tells us today that we say the Gloria. I don't know why, but the book says so. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, giver of all that adore your love, by which St. Lawrence was outstanding in faith and service and glorious in martyrdom, grant, we pray, that we may love what he loved and put into practice what he taught through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and you to the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. From the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance of every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those in need. Bless the man who is gracious and lends to those who are in need. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His prosperity shall be mighty upon the earth, and the upright generation shall be blessed. Bless Bless the the man man who is gracious and lends to those those in need. Well for the man who is gracious and lends, who conducts his affairs with justice. He shall never be moved. The just shall be in everlasting remembrance. Bless Bless the the man man who is gracious gracious and lends lends to those those in need. An evil report he shall not fear. His heart is firm, trusting in the Lord. His heart is steadfast. He shall not fear till he looks down upon his foes. Bless Bless the man man who is gracious gracious and lends lends to those those in need. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Bless Bless the man who is gracious and lends lends to those in need.
A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. And Jesus said to his disciples, Amen, amen, I tell you, unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever does, whoever loves his life loses it. Whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. St. Lawrence's most famous quote that is said of him that people remember the most is that when they were persecuting him, they put him on a rack and were on a spit and were turning him to roast him physically. And he said to his torturer, turn me over, I'm done on this side. I don't know if I could be that courageous. Matter of fact, uh, it makes me recall earlier this year when this whole thing was going on in Atlanta and I was actually living in the heart of all that mess. I remember having to go out one morning and I'm getting down on McGill Road, McGill Street, and I'm turning left and I'm getting ready to get up on Williams Williams, uh, Drive that takes you down to the highway to get on 8575 North. And as I'm getting ready to turn, there's this man with a long um, machete. And it's got these little niches in it. And he points at me and he points at it as though to say, well, you're next. And I thought, oh, my Lord, thank God that it was a clear turning lane and I could just get going. But that reality of, wow, I mean, you know. Something could happen to me. And uh, I don't know if I'd be considered a martyr. I'd just be a dead duck, probably. (laughs) Let's get cheated out of martyrdom. Um, Today, as we celebrate his feast day, we're we're called to this reality of our relationship with God and that Lawrence himself, a deacon and a martyr of the church, and actually kind of deacons that I know, I usually kid them. If I see them on the Feast of St. Lawrence, say, Happy Feast Day to you, and remember what happened to him could happen to you. Um, So um, it's the the reality of of giving one's life. Um, It is said of Pope uh, John, or sorry, Pope Paul VI, one of his encyclicals that he wrote was about the modern-day martyrdom of our lives. And before this whole pandemic thing occurred, and some of the other uprisings that were occurring in Atlanta, I said to somebody, I said, well, you know, we pretty much live a life where we we have to live as modern day martyrs. And that is that each day we die to ourselves. That's what the encyclical kind of inferred to, that we have a chance of, as a, as a, spiritual martyr, we can die to ourselves and, and rise anew to the, to the desire of following the Lord. Uh, Lawrence was very much that character. Um, his faith and his love for God, uh, one of the first deacons of the church, willingly giving his life uh, as a ransom in relationship with Jesus. Uh, because he ransomed his humanity so that he might have the relationship of eternity with God. Because we're not immortal. We're not immortal. We're, we're human flesh, and we all are aware of our humanity as we continue to get closer to the day in which the Lord might call us. And in that reality... The sense of each day, recognizing how we follow the Lord, dying to ourselves, trying to rise anew to him, preparing ourselves more and more 
for Christ, we might be less and less in us. And I know you might all tell me that I'm just a young buck, but, but I am 62 and I realize how much closer to my inevitable call to eternity is coming. So I know I'm not whatever 60-something that you all are, but I, I know I'm getting closer to it. My sisters and brothers, as we come before the Lord today, we, we call upon his name. We pray through the intercession of St. Lawrence, martyr and deacon of the church, that we may be always faithful to the Lord through his inspiration and his prayers for us, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for the soul of Donald Cox, for whom this Mass is being offered, we pray to the Lord. We pray for ourselves, the Church of Transfiguration, that we may recognize the ways that the Lord calls us into his transformative love each day, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our families and friends who are in need of our prayers, we pray to the Lord. We pray for those who do not know how to pray, and we pray to the Lord. For the sick and those who are struggling with the coronavirus, for those who are trying to bring about a cure, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the peace that only God can give, we pray to the Lord. For the prayers that are in the silence of each one of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Father of mercy and love, hear the prayer of your faithful and help us to always follow in your way. Help us to recognize how the saints teach us and remind us of the course of life that we follow each day in dying to ourselves and rising anew to you with the hope and the wonder that you fill us with through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer fruit of the vine, the work of human hands, and will become for us our spiritual drink. Thank you. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, O Lord, the offering which joyfully make on the feast of St. Saint Lawrence. Grant that we may become helped by your salvation through Christ our Lord.
The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, mighty and eternal God, for the blood of the martyrs, Lawrence, was poured out like Christ to the glory of your name. Show forth the marvelous works by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and in the fee will bestow strength to bear witness to you through Christ our Lord. And so with the power of heaven, we worship you constantly here on earth as before your majesty and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You indeed are holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the night before he was betrayed, he entered willingly into his passion. He took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice once more, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection. We offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Holy Father, with Gregory John, the Archbishop, with Joel and Bernard, his brother bishops, and all your clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, all who died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, and her blessed spouse, St. Joseph, with the blessed apostles, with St. Lawrence, and all who please you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs of eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, make us always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ said to your apostles, My peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church. And graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. Lamb of God. My sisters and brothers, behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Please pray this prayer for when one cannot receive communion. My Jesus, on the day of my baptism, you pour your love into my heart through the Holy Spirit who unites me eternally to you. Through that same Spirit, I pledge you my love and adore you, present in your most holy body and blood. Though I cannot consume you in this sacred banquet, let me be consumed by your complete desire for me, so that my longing for you may be filled with your love alone and your mercy of the Lord for me into this world so in me. Amen.
Nourished by these sacred gifts, we humbly implore you, Lord, that in the homage of dutiful service by which we render the feast of St. Lawrence may bring us unceasingly to your saving grace through Christ our Lord. And I remember a quote from Jack Benny, I believe. He said he was the perpetual 29-year-old. So that must make most of all you that age. And you never ask a woman her age in the South. So I apologize if I inferred something. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Go forward this day to love, sir, to know the Lord. I hope you all have a blessed day.